All right, Bears fans, welcome back, Bear Down. And there's always <laughs> a risk of doing one of these videos in the middle of the day, but I've been doing so many late night ones. I wanted to give an update on my thoughts right now in the middle of day three with all the action going down, with the cuttings, with the I mean, Jim, Jimmy Garoppolo was released, uh, Henry Runfro was released, uh, Mike Williams obviously was released, Calvin Ridley has now signed. So there's a lot of action happening. There's some movement going on. And the Bears have made a couple of small moves. So I wanted to give my thoughts in the middle of day three. Here are the mo three moves in the middle. Uh, Eamon Ogbon Jimmiga. <laughs> I did my best. I did my best with that. Signed a one-year contract. That one is a $2.1 million contract. Very quality, though. Not a lot of experience. Really been a depth piece. What this means to me is we're not re-signing Dylan Cole. And I'm okay with that. I think this is an upgrade from there. But really unproven. But if the Bears see something they like in him as a depth piece, as our fifth linebacker, as a special teams guy, I'm all down for it. So I like it. Brett Rippon, to me, shows that we want a little bit of depth with uh, a quarterback that has a little of experience. Uh, this does not scream to me that we're drafting Caleb Williams, but it also doesn't mean we're not drafting Caleb Williams. Okay, A lot of people have already been messaging me asking, does this mean we're taking... Uh, Caleb Williams, we're not taking Caleb Williams. I don't think this tips the hand either way. What it means is we're probably not drafting someone late in the draft. We're going to use those quality picks and maybe not trade down with our third and fourth round picks to get fifth and sixth round picks. We're looking to build through the draft. And that's something I mentioned earlier that a lot of fans are misunderstanding. You don't build through the draft in round five, six, and seven. Five, six, and seven rounds are out of necessity, which is why we were able to trade one or two, or three, all three of them, for different pieces for depth. Free agency right now is looking like it's for depth, and the draft is looking like it's for starters. And you can do that when you have two firsts, a third, and two fourths. Now, starters at different positions come from different places in the draft. You're not going to get your starters for a wide receiver in round three and four. Maybe in this draft you can get a third rounder, but not in normal drafts. So I do see a trade down with number one or number nine, and... Spoiler alert, all of you know I believe it's one because those top three wide receivers are going to go in the top six of this draft, if not top seven or eight. We're not going to have one of those top three wide receivers at number nine. It's not going to happen. So if we want Marvin Harrison Jr., Romo Dunze, or Malik Neighbors, that's got to happen in the top five or six. So I absolutely believe we're trading down with number one. Brett Rippon doesn't ruin that uh, theory or model at all. In fact, it reinforces it if you really want to read the tea leaves. But I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole today because it really doesn't mean one thing or another either way. Matt Pryor is a very quality. I did a, a short on it, uh, a Facebook short, a, I don't know, 45 second short on it. Because he had a phenomenal 2021, he was rotated a lot between uh, right tackle, left tackle. Uh, played a little bit of guard, just a tiny bit. Had a horrible 2022, so they didn't re-sign him. He was signed to a one-year deal by the Niners. Played very, very limited. I think 35 snaps overall, but... Didn't allow a pressure in that it's maybe one pressure. I need to double fact check that. But he didn't he didn't struggle. Those 35 snaps were good when he had to step in, but he didn't start for a reason. So he's not a starter. I do see that as tackle four and cutting Larry Borum. That's what I see with that move. Uh, I still see us drafting a tackle. I don't see us picking one up in free agency now. That was the depth piece for tackle. So I think we're set there. I think we're set at linebacker. Moves you see from now on at those positions will be just for bringing them in depth for the 90-man roster to compete in camp. It's going to be that type of stuff. But these guys are quality backups, so I see this being set. Brett Rippon can compete with Tyson Bajan. A lot of people aren't going to want to hear that, but with his experience and how he's been is in limited time in the league, no, he has not excelled. He's not been wonderful, but he's not bad either, and he's very respected in the league for his IQ in football. So I think it's a quality backup signing. I don't think that's a bad thing at all. So where we stand with the salary cap, it's not been updated on Track yet. Uh, this still kind of sits where we are with the linebacker pickup, though, and the 2.1, that is. We're probably right around $21 million. This is a rough estimate, but this is probably pretty roughly right where we are. Where do we go from here? You guys see at the bottom, I had that up the whole time. Our wide receiver room is decimated. The league knows it. We know it, which is very clearly why it's getting consensus and getting to be understood. We are going to trade down from number one to get that depth in the second round and pick up another wide receiver. We need a little bit more depth. I did a video early this morning showing where we stand with depth. We need some draft pieces if we're going to compete. By trading down once or twice, I really think it's possible to trade from one to two 
and two to six, maybe even two to three. It might happen, but I wouldn't expect that to be a huge haul from two to three guys. A lot of people are misconstruing that. We're going to take Washington's future first, and we're going to take New England's future first. If we get the haul from Washington, which a haul from one to two really is their first, their second, their fourth rounder, and a future first. That is a huge haul. A lot of people don't realize that. That is a huge overpay for moving one spot. And I'm good with that. If Ryan Poles gets that, I'm good with it. If he gets more, fantastic. When all the rumors were swirly and twirly early on, yeah, it was possible to get to one, their first rounder, their two second rounders, and a future first. That was possible. Anything's possible. I really don't expect anything more than the first, the second this year, and a future first if that trade goes down. Now, to trade from two to three, the draft, the value isn't as high there. The number one quarterback's already been gone, but New England might want to trade up like Philadelphia did one spot last year where they gave up a fourth just to move up one spot. That's an equal trade. Now, to move from three to two, the Bears might do that because they still want to take Marvin Harrison Jr. If you're doing that and you're saying, okay, well, the Giants are calling. We want to trade down to six. But New England, if you want to go ahead and secure the quarterback you want and not let us trade someone up in front of you, we'll just take a straight value, which would be their first this year, number three, and their second round pick this year, uh, which would be number 34. That's very fair. And I can see that happening. So if that happens... Fantastic. We've got 34. We've got 36 or 40. I think it's 40 now because I think the commanders traded 36 um, as part of their other trade. I'll have to check on that. Nope, I'm up in the night, guys. Sorry, I was thinking about the, the Giants trading for Brian Burns. They gave away one of their seconds. I had it mixed up in my head. So they still have 36 and 40, but I don't see them giving up both of those. I, I see one of them at most. So what do I expect moving forward from here? I do expect us to pick up a wide receiver. But I still expect us to pick up two in the draft. I can absolutely see that happening. So as we know, Chris Beattie is the wide receiver coach of the Bears now. He's worked with Mike Williams. We talked about the connection he has with DJ Moore. And I did a whole video about the culture and how Justin Fields is the culture. I'm not going to hash that thing out. But the point is Chris Beattie really helps with that culture with um, having a possibility of bringing Mike Williams in. So, yes, I referenced my own Twitter. Here's a tweet I sent out when uh, Mike Williams was cut. He's owed $12.4 million by the Chargers. So, if Chris Beatty has a great relationship with Mike Williams, guys, this isn't about how much he would get paid because he's already owed most of it by the Chargers. So, if he wants $16, $17 million, great. Let's give him an incentive-laced deal. He's been injured. We know that. But he's an elite receiver when he's healthy. So I put a couple of the options down here below of who I see us realistically being able to go after. And in order of which ones I think we should go after, because of salary cap is going to be the reasoning, and because of how much they could help us, I'm going to put them on here. And number one would be Mike Williams. Because of his height, we need a high point guy. We haven't had one. And all four of these guys are quality guys for different reasons. And so I put this on there. If we incentive lace him, if we give him $16 million and 12 and a half of it is paid by the Chargers, I am so good with that, and nobody should complain. Even if he gets injured and plays as little as he did last year, we're still drafting two more wide receivers. This would be a great move for the Bears. All right, next up, I have both Donovan Peoples-Jones and Nick Westbrook in kind. Both of them are kind of going under the radar right now. You're not hearing a lot about them, but both of them are going to want to, want to do a one-year prove-it deal. Nick Westbrook in kind hasn't quite hit the stride you think he would. And Donovan Peoples-Jones has gone through different quarterbacks and different systems where I don't think he's hit his full potential where he can. Because when you see flashes from him, he's really good. But he's got to prove himself still. So both of these would be one-year prove-it deals. And if we can get either of them between 2.5 to $4 million, I estimated 2.75 for Donovan Peoples-Jones, 2.5 for Nick Westbrook. This is my estimations. They might be off, but if we can get either of them at that contract value, absolutely sign them and then still draft two more wide receivers. I am so good with that, 100%. Here's some of their stats below. I've left it up through all of these that I'm going to show you. All of them are very similar as far as their drop rates and their contested catch rates. Obviously, Mike Williams would be the preference in that one. He's a high point guy who does hold on to the ball. Pass rating when targeting is very high, very elite, but all of these guys would be very quality in my book. And then last one is obviously Curtis Samuel. I've done a video where I showed the connection between DJ Moore and Curtis Samuel. Very, very good friends, even still to this day. When they were on the same team, they would always hug each other before they went outside of the tunnel. 
It's still known to this day that they have a close friendship. Uh, there was even a video of them when they parted ways from, from Carolina, when Curtis Samuel went to Washington, where they imaginary hugged each other in the tunnel because they're such close friends. That would be a culture thing to me. I would really like to see Curtis Samuel on the Bears. The problem and why I ranked this one fourth out of all four of them, he's going to cost money and we only have $21 million left. So if we still want to fill those other needs, which I think we very well could in the draft, but I still think with $21 million, we can go after a starter in two of those other positions. Defensive interior, I don't know at this point what we would do. So I really think trading down and picking one up in the second or third round is the move they would make right now. That's how I feel. So I think we're doing a defensive interior there. As far as center, if we get Jackson Powers Johnson, that fills it. It'll be very telling if we can come to a deal with Connor Williams. Obviously, it's going to be a difficult thing for him to try to gauge out the market this year because of his ACL injury and recovery. And big boys have a hard time recovering those from as, as opposed to other position players. So that might be something that's holding this up right now. People evaluating the market, people seeing what he's worth, him coming to terms with that, him taking a discount for the first year, but signing a bigger long-term deal. There might be conditions in there where he has to pass a physical, has to play so many snaps the, the second half of this year. Who knows? They can lace those things the way they want to, and that might be what's being worked on right now with Connor Williams and why you see Lloyd Cushenberry and other centers, Andre James has been re-signed, why you see them coming off the board. Um and why you haven't seen Connor Williams done yet. Those are things that teams have to work through and get a feel for. And tamper peering has been underway. Now they're getting a feel for it. We'll see what happens with Connor Williams. But also Chase Young. I still think this is very much on the table. It's probably a matter of Chase Young feeling like he's worth more than what teams are offering him. He's obviously gone to Carolina. That's been reported. We also have... You know, other defensive ends coming in to visit Hallis Hall that I'm not excited about, but I would love to see Chase Young. A lot of you don't agree with me, but I am totally on board with the one-year, $13 to $15 million prove-it contract. I would be very happy with that deal with Chase Young. It fills a very specific need for us, and he's played very well his whole career. I, I don't see the issues many people are seeing. The only time he's really struggled on the tackling is when he's had to change systems, and when he went to San Francisco. But other than that, when he played with Montez Sweat, very, very good on both sides of the ball. And I think Montez Sweat could help him with that as well. I think they complement each other. No, I don't see that as prove it to the Bears because I think next year, once we trade down and get another first, this next year's defensive end class is loaded. It's stacked. There's five guys in the first round that we could take throughout the entire first round and, and plug and play first right off the bat. We'll see how that goes through the year next year because obviously team, they have to play – their senior year to get it or their final year of eligibility or their fourth year or fifth year, whatever they've gone back to. They have to play that for us to see them this year to see if they play out the way we're expecting to. But this is a, a deep, a stacked defensive end class like this wide receiver class is this year. So there's a lot of options going forward. I see a lot of possibilities. Let's see what Ryan Poles cooks up. But my day three thoughts right now, this is what I'd like to see the rest of the way. Do I expect it? No, because right now Ryan Poles is showing he's going for value contracts. He's building his depth through free agency, and he plans on building his starters through the draft. That's going to require a trade down. More and more, it's looking like the Bears are completely leaning to Justin Fields. The difference is, I give it right now 80-20. The difference is they need to get uh, Caleb Williams into the room, into, the, into his workout, into the whiteboard, and just pressure him. Just pick his brain apart. See how he handles the pressure. See how he handles different situations. See if he's cool, calm, collected. See if he's basically Justin Fields. Because they probably see a couple of things they like a little bit more with his quick release. And things that they can coach up to get him to an NFL level. Where, whereas, Justin Fields has already proven that he can uh, improve every single year in the NFL. And that there's no reason he wouldn't continue to improve with Shane Waldron and with continued coaching and with how he's already been doing, improving the offense, improving the line, improving the wide receivers. So I think their confidence level is very, very high on Justin Fields. But as we know, Ryan Poles helped evaluate Pat Mahomes. Now, Ryan Poles was very shy about the whole Pat Mahomes comparison. There could be different reasons for that, but he said, yeah, well, basically they have the same arm angle, but I'm not going to go that far. Well, <clears throat> there's obviously things he likes about him to be able to have a top 30 visit. But I think that top 30 visit is more to pressure him and to get 
you know, the olive press on him and really squeeze him down and see what he's made of because he's good at that. He's going to see what he's made of. And I'd say right now he's probably leaning, you know, 80-20 to keeping Justin Fields. But if there's just something in there that's just super special, that's when he would take Caleb Williams. I don't see it happening at this point. So I really think planning on trade that down, build through the draft, get two wide receivers. Uh, and if we can pick up one or two or all three of these guys, the rest of free agency, man, that would be spectacular. We'll see if something happened while I'm even dropping this video. That's the risk of doing this midday. Let me know your guys' thoughts. This is where I stand on it. I'm really excited to see what happens the rest of the way. No, I'm not disappointed one bit with free agency because we're a lot deeper than we've been in the last three years. This team is much deeper, much better filled out already, and we still have number one, number nine, and a third and two fourths. So we're in good shape. We still have $21 million in salary cap. We still have the draft. Things are going according to plan is what I would say, and Ryan Poles has a good specific plan to – Continue to rebuild this team brick by brick. All right, so with that, hopefully nothing changed from when I made this video. We'll get it up as fast as possible. But let's see how the rest of the time goes and bear down.